Greetings. Greetings, students. Today we're going to discuss practice test 2-4. Let's begin. Question 1, slope. You're looking at the distances between the x and y. So this is the same as the distance formula which I gave you on the board. Except you're putting, x, except you're putting y over x. So here we got 16 to negative 8. This to this. These are 24 apart. It's decreasing by 24. That's the change in y. The x value here, negative 14 to 18. That's increasing by 32. That's the change in x. So again, this is divided instead of squared and added like the distance formula is. It says find the slope this time. I just go back and forth between the questions. So dividing by 8 here to reduce this is going to make this negative 3 over 4. Again, decreasing by 24 for the y's, increasing by 32 for the x's. We're thinking about number lines here. Question 2. There are four different options, actually six different options I can use here. I can use alternate interior, I can use vertical, I can use alternate exterior, corresponding, consecutive interior, and adjacent. This is one of the six options. So either the angles are going to be equal or supplementary. You need to decide this week which one. In this case, they're equal. That doesn't mean they're going to be equal on the test. I might have a supplementary set on the test. So this one's equal because they are alternate interior. In other words, because they open the same amount. If you look at the openings here, this opening is the same amount as this opening. They have the same opening amount. Now, if I move this 15x plus 9 over to here, then we have supplementary angles. It'd be consecutive interior. Or if I move the 17x minus 7 over here, that again would be supplementary. Or I can move them, you know, in different locations. So decide if it's equal or supplementary. That's the majority of the question right there. Is it equal or supplementary? After that, you can solve for x. Same steps you've always used. Take 15 from 17 to get 2. Add 7 to 9 to get 16. And divide 16 in half to get x is 8. Again, before you solve this question, make sure you set it up right. Make sure you're either equal or supplementary. Point slope forms on the board still. Still having a few of you miss it. Put the y next to the y. Put the slope in front of the parenthesis with the x next to the x. Remember the signs are opposite. Negative 2. Even though it's positive, it's minus 2 here. Even though it's minus 3, it's plus 3. This sign stays the same. The slope stays the same. Perpendicular. Definition again. Flipped and negated. Some of you keep getting this wrong. Some of you flip it. Some of you negate it. you got to do both. Reciprocal. Negative. Opposite. Reciprocal. If it was a negative 3 halves, it would be positive 2 thirds. Opposite. Reciprocal. Probably shouldn't say negative reciprocal because some even put in minus every week. It's the opposite reciprocal of what this one is. Flip it, change the sign. All right, this one. It's got a 90. That means it's right. And it's got two equal sides. That means it's isosceles. Next one, exterior angle theorem. The two inside area angles make the outside angle. So to get this question mark, I will subtract 142 and 111 to get 31. Now again, there's three options I can do here. I can give you the outside angle and one of the inside angles, in which case you subtract. I can give you both side, inside angles, in which case you add. Or I can switch these angles around, in which case you subtract as well if the 111 was here and the question was there. So there's three different options I can give you on this question. It's going to be one of the three, not necessarily this one. One of the three. Isosceles triangles. In this case, this fits 50 here. The base angles are congruent, in other words. So I will take 50 plus 50 and then subtract from 180. Now again, there's two different options here. I can either ask you about the vertex angle or one of the base angles. If I asked you what this one was, if the x was here, you'd just say 50. It'd be no work. If I ask you what this one is, you've got to add and subtract from 180. 
triangle sum theorem. Add these up to be 180. So x plus 91 plus 60 plus 35. Well, that's 6. That's 15, 18. That's x plus 186 equals 180. Take 186 away from 180 and you get negative 6 for your answer. Adding up to be 180. All right, so again, on this next question, look at the statement. That's going to help you more than the picture. The picture is meant to be confusing on this question. So I'm saying x and y. x and y. Where's x? x is here. Where's y? y is here. Well, it says x, y equals x, y this time. Well, that's an easy question. So x, y is equal to itself on this particular picture, on this particular diagram. That doesn't mean it's going to be that way on the test. So I could have asked you for yz. yz would equal yd. xz would equal xd. Pay attention to what it says. Same thing on number 10. Start with one of the triangles, either the top or the bottom. So let's talk about the top triangle. V, W, U. Or U, V, W. Triangle. V, W, U, or you could say U, V, W, or W, U, V. You could say it any order you want. Which angle goes with angle V? So angle V this time is marked with two markings. So is the other one on the bottom. So that goes with V. U goes with U. G goes with W this time. Now look, I've already made a mistake. U should go with U. This shouldn't be U. This should be G. So I've already made a mistake here. This shouldn't be VU. It should be VG. And then U. So if you're missing this on the test, look at the markings. Make sure the markings are the same. Three here for the ones in the same spots. W with G. All right, here. Label the, the sides that are shared with markings. I don't care how many markings you use. Use one, two, or three. This has got three side markings on the top and bottom triangle. This is side, side, side congruence. The first question here, determine if the triangles are congruent. It's going to be kind of irrelevant because I'm going to put congruent triangles to figure out why. What are the four theorems it is. So in other words, your answers here are going to be one of these four. And figure out which one you're going to use. So side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, angle, and what's the third one? Side, angle, fourth one, side, angle, side. One of those four. So here I've got two sides, one angle on each triangle. Why two sides and an angle? This is an angle marking, just like up here on the picture. That's an angle marking, not a side marking. It's on the edge of the triangle, not in the middle. So those, that's an angle. These are sides. These are three sides, so yeah, nothing to there. Anyway, so there's the first half of the test for 12. Next question. That's where the new questions begin, since we had a lot of material, new material. So the whole back is going to be new questions. Name a segment parallel to the one given. So MN. Well, let's look at MN. Here's M to N. Which line on this diagram, or segment, I should say, points the same way? Now look at X. YX doesn't look like it points the same way. That intersects it. Neither does PN, PM. It's WY. These two point the same way. Look. Parallel. So this is the definition of parallel from grade school. Which ones point the same way? WY. If you put WP, that's fine as well. WP is also parallel there. And so is PY because it's all WY, WP and Y. So any of those three points. All right, next one, find the length of RT. This is the mid-segment theorem. We double the inside se segment. We times this by two every single time. It's inside the triangle. It's equal to twice. Which can mean it's half the outside. So we times it by two to make it so it's equal. So RT is 14, two times seven. We do the same thing on number 15. We times by two. The only issue here is now we have to solve for an x. So I double this. Instead of 2x, it's 4x. Instead of 31, it's 62. 
that will equal to 26 plus x. And then we solve this with our steps. Same steps as always. Take x from 4x to get 3x. Take 62 from 26. That's actually negative. That's fine that it's negative. It doesn't have to be positive. It's negative 36. Divide 36 by 3 and you get negative 12. X is negative here. You can check your work if you want. Put the X back in. Negative 24 plus 31 is 7. And 26 minus 12 is 14. We wanted this one to be twice as big. So that's right. This should be 14. This should be 7. Same answers I used here. Pythagorean theorem. I'll put this up on the board for you. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B are sides or legs of a triangle. Not sides, but legs. So the key is what I wanted to use there. A and B are the legs. These are legs. This is hypotenuse. Make sure you do it right. I might give you the hypotenuse and ask you for one of the legs. So these are A and B. This is C. C is the one that matters. Identify this first. Which one's the hypotenuse? This is the longest. Longest is C. The other two, A and B, you can switch them around. So you don't have to put them in either order. So in this case, it's 9 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared, which is in this case X. C is X in this case. Now again, on the test, I might give you an X on one of the legs. So make sure you understand if it's a leg or the hypotenuse that I'm asking about. Square these. Multiply them by themselves. 9 times 9 is 81. 12 times 12 is 144. Add them together. 144 plus um, 81 is 2, 2, 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. 14 plus 8 is 22. And so x is the root of 225. That's 15. Root of 25 is 15. 15 times 15 is 225, in other words. Find RF if UF is 5. So R to F, is this the whole length? Is it the third of the length? Or is it the half? Is it the two-thirds of the length? R to F is the whole thing. So this is the whole length from here to here. That's what we're looking for. We were given UF. We were given this length is 5. From here to here is 5. So I'm getting messy here. Sorry. I should just put the, the lengths on the diagram. That is 5. If that's 5, this is twice as long. This is 10. RU would be 10. I didn't ask you what RU was, but it might be useful for you to think about what RU is here. Then the whole length from R to F is 10 plus 5. RF equals 10 plus 5, which is 15. So again, the setup here, or the concept here, is that this length here is half the length here. Or you can think of this length here, RU is twice that length there. So let's look at the next question. JB is here. It's 2x plus 2. JV is here. So it's the same type of setup. So I have here 2x plus 2 as JB. 4x minus 1 as JV, which is the whole length from here to here. 4x minus 1. So again, this shorter length should be half of that length. And the relationship between this length and the entire length is that the entire length is not three times as much, but one and a half times as much. So what I would do on this question is I would label the short length here as half of this length. BV is half of JB. So BV is divide these numbers by 2, x plus 1. And then these two lengths together add up to be that length. So x plus 1 plus 2x plus 2 equals 4x minus 1. Then I can solve this for x. Combine like terms on the left. 3x plus 3 equals 4x minus 1. 3 from 4x is x. 1 plus 3 is 4. x is 4. You can check your work. 16 minus 1 is 15. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 plus 5 is, in fact, 15. This would be 10. 8 plus 2. This would be 5. 4 plus 1. 10 plus 5 is, in fact, 15. So that is correct.
This will be the longest question on here, the hardest one on here for you. All right, next one, easy question. PS is, PT is 6, that's P to T. These are equivalent. They're the same. 6. Easiest question on here. This one's the Pythagorean theorem. So SF is 8. This is 8. SP is 10. So we got 8 and 10. We've got the hypotenuse and one of the legs. I'm looking for the other leg, PF. So PF squared, you can call it X if you want to write it X instead of PF squared, is equal to 8 squared plus 10 squared. 8 squared is 64. Oh, my setup is entirely wrong here. I warned you about this on number 16. The two legs make the hypotenuse. So I shouldn't do PF squared plus 8 equals 8 squared plus 10 squared. I should do PF squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So we're going to subtract 64 from 100 here. Instead of adding them like we did here when we're solving for the hypotenuse, this one's going to subtract because we're solving for a leg. So PF squared equals 36, not 164. The square root of 36 is 6. PF equals the square root of 36, which is, in fact, just 6. Be careful on these questions, Pythagorean theorem. They'll get you like that, whether you're adding or subtracting, if you're solving for hypotenuse or leg. All right, angle bisector. What does bisector mean? Bisector means cuts in half. So what's been cut in half? Angle TRS. TRS is cut in half. So if this is 34, angle 2 is also 34. Angle TRS is equal to 68 bisector. So these are angle bisectors like we talked about when we talked about the end center. Same setup here except I've got X's now. So if angle 1 is 10X minus 4 and the whole thing is 19X minus 2, this has to be doubled to equal that. So instead of setting 10x minus 4 equal to 19x minus 2, 19x minus 2 instead of being 10x minus 4, well I'm going to double that. It's going to be 20x minus 8. Double angle 1 will equal the angle TRS. 19 from 20 is 1. And then 8 take away 2 is 6. And we add 8 to negative 2. Opposite sign, subtract 8, take away 2. All right, 23. This is the best way I could uh, figure out how to test these questions. Our computer doesn't have, program doesn't have good questions about these. So, um, Ms. Muko has the acronym P-A-M-A-C-I-C-O. There's an acronym to help you remember it. What does this mean? P stands for perpendicular. Which one does it go with? Circumcenter or centroid? Because these go together. It goes with circumcenter. So this is option C. Perpendicular bisectors make circumcenter. A stands for altitude. It goes with end center. Altitude? No, angle bisector, sorry. There's two A's, sorry angle bisector and it goes with end center. M stands for medians. It goes with centroid. And the other one A stands for altitudes. There's the altitudes and it goes with overfill center. I'm not going to change this question on the test. It's going to be the same question. Question 23 is exactly the same. Study what goes with what. Remember what goes with what. I might change the order of the letters, so it might not be the same order of letters, but the question will be the same. Anyways, good luck.